Edits are now being made on a video we are told officially stating his intention to seek a second term ahead of a release that we are told is likely happening tomorrow. That's right, President Joe Biden is expected to announce that he plans to run for re-election on Tuesday of this week. And it's not necessarily great news considering the fact that the majority of Americans don't want him to run for re-election. But don't worry, the DNC is going to help him out by preventing any Democratic primary debates in the lead up to the 2023 election. We're gonna give you the details on that in just a moment. But first, let's go to the NBC News poll, which is pretty damning and damaging for Biden. Now, according to that poll, 70% of Americans do not want Biden to run for a second term compared to only 26% who do. And Biden's age, of course, has a lot to do with this. Among those who do not want the 80 year old president to pursue a second term, 69% cite age as a reason why, with 48% calling it a major reason why. Now, Biden is currently 80 years old. If he were to run for reelection and win a second term, he would be 86 years old by the time his second term is up. And what do his advisors have to say about his age? Let's watch. Half of Democrats do not believe the president should run for re-election. Now, if you look at the concerns that these voters have, uh, the, uh, nearly half of them uh, say that his age is a major issue. President Biden is 80 years old. He would be 86 at the end of a second term if he were to win. But his advisors uh, believe that they can overcome these concerns about his age. His allies have pointed to his records and say the voters ultimately will side with him when they look at the alternatives. And honestly, Honestly, those who are concerned about his age have good reason to be concerned. Uh, while he's managed to do the job for his first term, is he gonna be able to swing it for another term? Keep in mind, this is an incredibly stressful job. And some of Biden's gaffes are concerning. Uh, here are just a few of them. Secretary of Health and Education Service, I nominate Javier Bacaria. You know, Javier Bashir, excuse me. We have this notion that somehow if you're poor, you cannot do it. Poor kids are just as bright and just as talented as white kids, P wealthy kids, black kids, Asian kids. No, I really mean it, but think how we think about it. Luxury homes and other ill-begotten gains of Putin's kleptocracy. Uh, yeah, kleptocracy and club. The guys who are the kleptocracies. <laughs> Just today, we've got news that Rashid, Rashid Sanuk is now the prime minister. You're trying your best, but it never feels like enough. Thank you. At the end of such a momentous event, the word thank you seems kind of inadequate. Jake just asked if that's real. That's real. <laughs> and I don't show you guys that to that make fun of clip. him. He's 80 years old, everyone. He's the president of the United States. Can we please just be honest about what's happening right no, now? No, there's no way. There's no way mainstream media is gonna be honest. Okay, so I was on Chris Cuomo's show on Friday night. That's on News Nation. That's I'm not saying for that. I'm saying because I was on with Chris Hahn, who's a, you know, he's a Democratic strategist and actually one of the ones that isn't so bad, right? He's a very rare one that gets it right from time to time. And even he was like, no way, Biden's a winner, and we, oh my God, the American people love him. He's the new coming of FDR, and he's accomplished more than any other person. He's just the biggest winner of all time. They're on a different planet, guys. They really Look, are. The, this is not about us versus corporate media or corporate Democrats. This is about the numbers. Tw only 26% of Americans want Joe Biden to run again. So you can't wish that away. The, and they, they tried this with Hillary Clinton when her numbers were terrible. And she was among the three least popular people to have ever run for president in America. Everyone on TV, everyone in mainstream media told you, no, don't believe your lying eyes. 
No, don't believe the numbers. Math is not real. We've got alternative facts for you. Hillary Clinton's the only one who could beat Donald Trump. And now they're saying the same thing, same exact thing that Joe Biden's yep. the only one who could beat Donald Trump. Now, of course, their one thing that they're relying on is, oh my God, he won the last election. Of course, that's you. You have to acknowledge that. But guys, he only won it by forty-three thousand votes in the three swing states that determined the electoral college. The seven million votes he got more were basically in New York and California. I love it. It's great, and I wish it was based on popular vote. Then it wouldn't matter who we picked; we'd win easily, right? But it isn't. It's based on the electoral college, and he won it by this much last time. And back when Trump was even more unpopular, yeah. and back after he after he had bungled COVID, after he said you should inject bleach into your lungs, after he screwed up everything, Joe Biden barely beat him. Right? What did and Trump in was the way he handled COVID. But voters, they have short memory, right? When it comes to those kinds of situations. Absolutely. And by the time you get to the general election, if you think that Biden's the best person to beat Trump, I think that you're you're just Placing a risky bet on Biden. No, no, you're on a different planet. There's no question about it. I don't care how many times everyone on TV says it, everyone in the New York Times and everyone at the DNC says it. You're on a different planet, guys. Here's the numbers. His approval rating right now, Biden's, is at 38%. Let's go to graphic four. Yeah, and his disapproval rating is at 48%. Mm -hmm. That is a nightmare. That's a nightmare for anyone. You see it right there. Now, people don't like Trump either. Okay, and they have a 34% approval for him, 53% have a negative view of him. But number one, it might not be Trump. If it's not Trump, the Republican is gonna win super easy, like in a landslide against Biden, okay? And then number two, why is our only two choices, two people mm -hmm. who are deeply disliked in this country, nearly hated, in this country. And if you're in Washington, I just broke your heart because I said Biden might be hated. He's at 38% learn math. <laughs> Look, I, my whole life before the establishments just started flat out lying about stuff like this. I would read in every article now for an incumbent, being under 50% is a really bad state of affairs. It's a near death knell. And that held true for the great majority of elections. He ain't even near 50%, he's at 38, okay? But yet everyone in Washington is going, oh, no, 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 he's really popular. And he did all of these amazing things. He didn't even get even voting rights passed. He didn't get minimum wage passed. He didn't get paid family leave, paying at polls at 84% didn't get it passed. He didn't get any of this stuff passed. They're pretending that he passed his agenda when he only passed at most 15% of his agenda. 85% ran into a wall and he didn't give a damn. He didn't even try, look guys, look at how incompetent Biden is. Like I said, paid family leave at 84%. Why don't you reintroduce it? Uh, well, that would be progressive and I'm going right. Because now he's talking he's, about cutting the deficit. Yep. No, 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 he's now moving toward the right. Uh, and that's- Loser, total loser. Okay, so let's get to the DNC and how corporate media is reporting on Biden because I think that's relevant to the story because the manufacturing consent component of this is incredibly frustrating. So the DNC is fully aware that there are primary challengers to Biden, but they've been clear that they are not planning on holding any debates for a Democratic primary. Let's go to graphic five here where the Washington Post reports the National Democratic Party has said it will support Biden's reelection and it has no plans to sponsor primary debates, but why? So you have Marianne Williamson, who is running against Biden in the Democratic primary. You also have Robert F. Kennedy Robert Jr. Ke Robert F. Kennedy Jr. also running in that primary. Listen, regardless of what you think about the two other candidates, why don't you let the American people decide? Why don't you give them the opportunity to debate their ideas on a debate stage? And if you're a firm believer in Biden and you want him to win reelection, I hear you. You should be secure in having Biden debate these two other candidates on the on the debate stage. Why would that even be a problem? Guys, look, let's break this down. So first of all, not having debates, totally undemocratic, totally outrageous. If you see any progressive legislator bowing their head to that, they're not on your side. I'm sorry, but that's a red line. You can't not have debates. I totally agree. It's totally outrageous, okay? Not even, go. okay, so now the next thing is, wait a minute, Marianne Williamson, 
is at 10% in a poll. You're not gonna debate someone that's on the board that's at 10%. The previous standard used to be one to 2%. I remember back in 2016 when Larry Lessig got to 2% and 3% and they said, uh, we're gonna break our rules and not allow you to debate and that was a big controversy. <laughs> She's at 10% and you're not gonna let her debate? Well, no, that's just being authoritarian. That's just saying we're so afraid of this adult senior citizen, which is who is definitely going to lose in the general election. But we would much rather lose to a Republican than to have a progressive win. So we're not gonna let him debate because he's a hot mess. But I got news for you and our members wrote in about this and it's a great point. It's gonna he's gonna have, No, first of all, he's gonna have to debate in the general election anyway. Mm -hmm. You can't protect him from that. So when he goes into a debate completely unprepared, he's gonna be like, uh, my opponent, Joe, he's on that side. My opponent, right? You guys are crazy. No, we're not gonna stand for it. So I think RFK Jr. is a kook, but so what? If I was the president and I was and I was strong and I cared about my policies, I'd be like, yeah, bring the kook on. Who cares? Right? Oh, you're against vaccines. Okay, you you know better than 99% of the world's doctors. You figured it out, okay? Who cares? Beat them. If you think Marianne Williamson is not up to your standards, and that's what every writer, God damn, so biased. Every mainstream media reporter already writes her off. Yeah, let me give you an example real quick. Uh, this is Graphic Eight. As President Biden, near, this is the New York Times, this is the first paragraph in their piece. As President Biden nears the formal announcement of his 2024 reelection bid, one of the most important developments of the campaign is something that hasn't happened at all. No serious primary challenger ever emerged. Oh God, they're unreal, man. But, they're unreal. They're biased. Okay. They're we're objective. Someone's sitting. By the way, when like Kamala Harris got to ten percent in the last election, they're like, da 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 da, da Kamala Harris is going to be the next president of the United States. Guys, you guys are so biased. It's maddening. No, uh, twenty six percent. Only twenty six percent of the country wants you to run. Well, he's the only one who could win. You'd have to be a stark raving lunatic to believe that. If the DNC thinks that by suppressing other candidates, challengers to Biden is going to bode well for them, I think that they've learned absolutely nothing from 2016 where they tried to play all sorts of cutesy little games and tricks to suppress the message from Bernie Sanders. I remember when they would only have primary debates on like Friday nights when they knew no one was watching. Yep. I remember when they tried to limit the number of primary debates that took place. All of those little games ended up backfiring and ended up amplifying Sanders' message. So I don't know how it's gonna play out this time around, but it's the same trick that I've seen from the DNC previously. They're one trick ponies, they're scared. They know they have a flawed candidate. They don't want to have to see that candidate get challenged with other potential, you know, Democratic primary winners. So they just scrap the idea of having debates in the first place. Guys, the the reason why they go to antiquated, anachronistic examples whenever they talk about primaries is because they don't want primaries. That includes the reporters. That includes all the news actors on television. Okay, so. They go to 1972 and 76 and 1980. Well, why are we talking about the 1800s and the 1700s? The last two elections, the Republicans had a fierce primary in 2016. They ripped each other's faces off and they won. 2020, Democrats have a strong primary where people challenge one another. The Republicans don't. And guess who won? The Democrats won. The more you fight in a primary, the better your chance of winning. And there's a very real tangible reason for it, because it creates more media attention. So more people are talking about your issues. Hey, should we do universal health care coverage? Hey, should we do paid family leave? Should we do higher minimum wages? Should we do more voting rights? Should we expand Social Security and Medicare? And that is being talked about 24 seven, and that is creating billions of dollars in free media for your side. And they're saying, we don't care. We want to get rid of the billions of dollars of free media for Democratic agenda. We want to get rid of any, of any kind of real competition. And we want to pick a, some, a candidate that we already know, based on the polling, has an excellent chance of losing. All to make sure no progressives allowed. It's disgusting.